Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to another V-Rising video! In this one I'm going to show you how to easily build a prisoner's dungeon as well as how to feed on pure blood endlessly. The prisoner system in this game basically allows you to pick your food, your favorite blood type and pureness, including 100% quality of course, and then you can harvest that same blood for as long as you wish. Amazing, right? Increasing your powers in the process, but to get there you need to follow a few steps. For starters, you need to lock prison cells and catch rare prey to harvest later on. Let's start there. Building your own prison is not necessarily something you can do early game. After all, you need to kill and drain the V-Blood out of Vincent, the Frostbringer, who is a level 40 ice boss. This cold-hearted enemy normally roams in the central roads of the Dunley farmlands. I usually find him around these specific roads, as I am showing in the map. I even found him randomly while looking for pure blood prey, so he is normally very easy to find, especially with the tracking system and my directions here. Anyway, once you take care of Vincent, you can start building prison cells at your castle. You can find it under production, then dominance. It only costs 12 iron ingots to make a cell, and you are are pretty much good to go. If you are not sure how to get iron yet, then head to high level areas. There's plenty all over the place, but specifically, this area here is very rich in iron, so that's a good option. Note that unlike servant coffins, for example, there is no building limits for prison cells, which means you can build as many prison cells as you want to ensure you only drink the most refined blood types in the world. Now, let's fill up these empty, lonely cells. To start with, let me show you a few tricks on how to speed up your hunting. First of all, you need to unlock the charming skill through normal questing. That's an essential point, without this one, you cannot do it. But it unlocks very early, so that should be no big deal considering the prison cell requirements. Next, you should know that the higher the area, the higher is the chance to find pure blood enemies. So if you are looking for those, I recommend focusing on the northern parts of the map or dive deep into the Dunley farmland or the Silver Light Hills. You can ignore the cursed forest though. There's mostly creatures around these parts. Lastly, there is a skill you can use to make your search much easier, but this one is optional, of course. I'm talking about the blood hunger from killing Tristan, the vampire hunter. This vampire skill shows the blood type and percentages of every enemy in your screen. It's handy, this way you don't have to manually hover over anyone anymore. You can just speed up your horse and only stop when you spot something of your interest, like it happened here. Note that Blood Hunger displays the purest blood as true red, so the more vivid red, the better the quality. Visual information, everyone, always useful to have. Anyhow, you can start by charming a few random enemies just for convenience, either to drain or to generate blood essence. It's free blood after all at your castle, so why not? Then later when you come across your favorite mighty blood types, you can easily replace the useless ones and enjoy some quality meals. And here I came across this 100% worker's blood, so I charmed and walked him back to base. If you are too far away, you can always use the cave passage because you can go through with a charmed human and a horse. Everything at once, no problemo there. At your castle, interact with an empty prison cell and click on the imprisoned button right there to secure your charmed human. Once you populate a cell, you can access new options such as killing your target. This is a great option when you no longer need a prisoner or you can choose to charm it again. This option allows you to easily move prisoners between cells if you want to move something. But there are even more options as to be expected. You can obviously drain their blood, that's the main purpose of the previous steps, but draining a target takes away 30 to 60% of their health. But before you go ahead and drain your prisoners to death, we don't want that, let's go over some basics on how to keep them alive. Now, generally when you imprison a new target, their HP is low as a result of the vampire charm, so make sure to feed them first, that's the only way to heal them. Sadly, there are only a few food options. You can choose between rats, which heals 20 to 30% HP per rat, or the fat gobby fish, which fully regenerates the prisoner's HP bar. 
that's a yummy one. Feeding usually takes a while, so I suggest feeding them right before you leave into your next run. Then when you come back, you can safely feed on them because they will be full HP. You can get to save some time this way. Now, if you are not sure how to get prisoners food in quantity, here's a little help. You can mass spawn rats at your vermin nest just by tossing in plant fiber and bones, which are very easy to farm. Don't forget to pick up the rats instead of killing them though, otherwise it's pretty useless. As for the fat gobby, you can loot them from scavenging villages, farms or simply by fishing. The latest is the most reliable way to farm fish, all fish really, but it's not so easy. These bubble spots are not so common, I would say, so maybe doing a little bit of both will be the best option in this case. As for fishing tips, look for these bubble spots on water bodies, then use your fishing rod found at wooden crafting benches to, well, fish. You need to use the left mouse button once, then again later when the bubbles get more intense as shown in the footage. Don't use your right mouse buttons though or you will cancel the fishing animation in action. Alright, so that's how to heal prisoners, but there's a second element to manage here, the misery levels. It automatically rises with every blood drain you do, from 5 to 20% per, and the only way to lower misery is to feed your prisoners with some prestige quality fish, such as rainbow Trouts, which reduces misery by 5 to 10% each, and Sage Fish, which heals the prisoner up to 70% HP and reduces misery by 15 to 30% each. So, in the end, if you want to keep your prisoners alive and well, you need to fish a lot. These rare fishes don't come by easily. Prisoners are quite costly to preserve, I know, it's a common fact, but let me explain why is it so important to keep your prisoners' misery low. Well, that's because they take extra damage per drain depending on their misery levels. The higher the misery, the more damage they take per blood drain. I tested with several prisoners, I even ended up killing a few in the process, in the name of science, but I did discover that 100% misery will instantly kill a full HP prisoner when you drain them. Now, the numbers are very unpredictable because of these range values, so just to be safe, keep your prisoners' HP as high as you can and their misery as low as possible. That's the only way to ensure they will keep on living and providing. On the other hand, if you don't mind taking risks, then be prepared to lose them at some point, because these values can go really, really high, and sometimes the worst happens. That's how math kinda works. Probabilities, right? Well then, there's one last detail to properly drain prisoners. You always need a new glass flask per drain. It's a strange one, I know, for whatever reason the flask disappears from your inventory whenever you drink from it. Perhaps it's a balancing mechanism. Anyway, to obtain glass flasks, there are two options. Loot them by scavenging around or by crafting them at an alchemy bench, which unlocks with level 30 boss, Clive the fire starter. However, the glass recipe only unlocks later with level 44 boss, Christina the sun priestess. Moreover, you need to farm quartz before you can smelt it into glass at a furnace. If you are not sure where to find quartz, you can head to this spot at the northern part of the Dunley farmlands. It's my favorite area to farm it, there's plenty and more than enough there for glass flasks. Once you get them, you can go ahead and drain your prisoners, drink it right away or keep it for later, the choice is yours. You can even build a vintage wine cabinet like this one to store it in style. Anyway, you can decrease the amount of damage all your prisoners take per drain by 25%. It's a huge perk to have, but it's really not easy to get it. To unlock this benefit, you need to build a matching prison floor at your dungeon room. However, this type of floor is a late game one and it's not so easy to obtain. It depends on lots of boss farming, luck and probably hundreds of schematics. So keep researching stuff at your Athenium once you get it and then it's all about discovering researching until you get it. It's pretty much RNG here, so good luck with that until you get the given effect. Moving forward, while working on this guide, I also discovered that it's not possible to drain creature blood, as in farming it. 
First of all, you cannot charm creatures. I tried many times, but it has no effect on them as to be expected because they are not humans. Secondly, there are werewolves in game. During the day, they are humans, so it is possible to charm and imprison such enemies. But here's the funny part. When the night breaks, they shift into werewolves and instantly break loose from your prison. They even attack you in your castle if you are around. So you cannot farm or keep them behind bars for too long. Just to let you know. Let's go over the last tips now. If you want to consistently play with 100% blood type, you have two options in the end. One, charm several humans with the desired blood types to ensure you have plenty of blood and backups to keep feeding on. This requires a lot of work though. First to find such targets, and then to keep them alive, it's a lot of resources. Or two, charm only different blood types and adapt to your activities, like using worker's blood for farming or pure warrior's blood for a boss fight. For everything else, you use some random low blood, whatever you can find. The second option is obviously way more doable and logical in my view. Still, there are a few more things you can do to ensure you can play with 100% blood for longer periods. That's correct, I highly recommend you guys to use all sorts of alternative healing methods other than blood mend, please don't use blood mend, to ensure none of that precious blood you have just harvest goes into waste. So use salves, potions or animal forms like the bear to heal naturally over time. Also, if you take a short break, enter your coffin first so your blood rates won't drop as quickly. If you combine all these tips and tricks, you should be able to maintain your 100% blood type without much of a trouble. Remember, if you need to feed less frequently, it also means you need less time and fewer resources to keep them alive. It's a win-win situation. Alright, that's my complete guide for the Re-Rising's Prisoner System and how to maintain your blood type for as long as you wish. Personally, I think it's smarter to diversify your blood banks instead of focusing in just one type. After all, different activities require different effects, but it all comes to personal taste in the end. Lastly, keep in mind that in early game you must rely on whatever blood you can find. It's not exactly possible to keep the same one at all times. There is a score gear level attached to this, around level 35 to 40, when you can take down the Frostbringer and unlock prison cells. But from that point on, you can charm as many prisoners as you would like and feast on your favorite blood as much as you want. Well then, thank you for watching. Let me know if I missed anything critical in the comments below and feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. My name is Marta Branco and I will catch you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.